here we are with another video and in this video I will be talking about Natalie Wood now I know a lot of you don't know who she is so here we go with a brief intro Natalia Nikolvina Zakarenko aka Natalie Wood was born on July 20th 1938 in San Francisco to Russian immigrant parents. She also has a younger sister named Lana Woods moving forward here. Natalie has been acting since she was about five years old. She once played in Miracle on 34th Street and many more. Oh, and not to mention while filming the movie The Green Promise, whereas it was a bridge that was meant to collapse and whoever was on it was to fall into the water. Now, her mom told her that the bridge wasn't rigged and that it was okay for her to walk across it just to get her to walk across. Well, she did, and Natalie then fell into the water and broke and scarred her wrist. Oh, and they kept filming, of course. Now, you would think that her mom would then take her to the hospital. Well, she didn't, and for the remainder of her career, she was forced to wear bracelets to cover her scar on her wrist. It was told that her mother was afraid that she would be labeled as handicapped and it would prevent her from getting parts. I mean, Natalie was the breadwinner at this point. So to sum it up, her mom was pimping her and or just living her dreams through her daughter, by any means necessary. Of course, Natalie, being a people pleaser, did whatever her mother told her to at that time. Just like Tina knows and is still doing through Beyonce. A video coming soon about Tina and Matthew, so stay tuned. Anyway, later she was also nominated for an Academy Award for her role in Rebel Without a Cause with James Dean. She achieved all of this before graduating high school, which is when she later married Robert Ragnar, who was eight years her senior. She was only 19 years old and he was 27 years old. Now, rumor was he took her virginity and the relationship and marriage was set up by her mother and the rest of her team to give her more publicity and exposure. They've been doing this for years in Hollywood. It was just that this time, Natalie was already a huge fan of Robert Ragnar. Now, moving, moving along here. Now, because of her transition from Sweetheart Rose to Rebellious Rose, it opened many doors for her. But her transition didn't go so well, and she had many big office flops thereafter. But it was then the director, Ella Kazan, that took a chance and casted her in a lead role in Splendor in the Grass, and her career rebounded. In that film, she had to face her demons and also help capture her emotions and hysteria and took her acting to another level. Because even though she was acting in these movies, she never went to acting school or had any coaching on some techniques or anything of that nature. But with the help of Kazan, or Kazan, however you pronounce her name, she developed it. Then by 1961, she played Maria in West Side Story, you all know that was a huge success and remained and reacted many times over and even now. So many remakes have been done of that as I've just said. Now they said it was like the part was written for her. After that she was on fire. By 1964 she was nominated for three Academy Awards. It was during the success of this movie whereas Robert and she divorced. But also note this was during the Marilyn Monroe days and also when men kind of dominated the acting world. Women were noticed but not as much. Now, the higher she rose and also the height of haters and criticism that came her way. But she was a good sport about it and at this time in her life she was used to it. However, that didn't stop the movie deals from coming her way. She did many more. She was always busy. Oh, and do note, she achieved all of this while still in her 20s, but it was her role in This Property is Condemned, which set her, put like this, the set was during the Great Depression. That's how they made the movie, during the Great Depression. She captured that role so deeply rare, she suffered emotionally and had to seek professional therapy, because apparently she tried to commit suicide because she was so fed up and just had enough. She was working nonstop. It was then she turned down a role for the movie of Bonnie and Clyde. Then she took a break and then came back strong and co-starred in Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. It was then she met and married Richard Gregson. 
After this movie, she became pregnant with her first child, Natasha Gregson. She was 32 years old at this point. Unfortunately, they divorced a few years later. She then reunited with her first husband, Robert Wagner, in the movie called The Affair. And also, they did a movie called Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And many more movies thereafter. I'm not going to name all of them. They had a daughter together. And they lived somewhat a normal life. Well, in front of the cameras and in public anyway. She then went on to do many more movies in this period. Woods started to have more success in television as well now. Receiving high ratings for the Cracker Factory. And especially the Ministries films From Here to Eternity with Kim Bassinger. Woods' performance won her a Golden Globe award for best actress she was in the process of filming before she died a science fiction film called brainstorm co-starring christopher walken and directed by douglas trumbull but unfortunately she um ended up dead now let's go deep okay y'all have to note that robert ragnar was like the bobby brown B status at this point to Natalie Wood who was with a Houston A status but the only difference is he constantly cheated and he was known to have had many affairs with many well-known women and men in Hollywood aside from that he had a temper it was told that they often argued and it sometimes resulted to violence that she covered up to prevent a scandal among other things Apparently, it was reported a while ago that Natalie one night during one of Wagner's drunken blackouts and verbal and physical abuse episodes, it was reported that she ran to a neighbor's house for safety, and it was there she was reported saying that Wagner was going to kill her. They called the police, but they never took a statement or believed her. Wagner had some major pull and power in L.A. I mean, back then he was like uh, Brad Pitt, if you want to call him that, but not as famous as Brad Pitt. Now, you have to understand, Natalie was known to keep a lot of things secret. For example, her sister, Lana Wood, just came out saying that her sister was raped when she was only 16 years old by a big-time actor at the California Chateau Marmont Hotel that went on for hours. Now, if you go back, you will see at that time and age, she was doing a film called Rebel Without a Cause with James Dean, who coincidentally was staying at the same hotel, whom died the following year in a car crash. You make the call. Now, hold up now, don't get it twisted. He didn't rape her, but he may know who did. Now, you all have to understand that the director, Nicholas Ray, who was known for his disgusting <laughs> exportations, drug using, and just sexual exportations, just to put emphasis on that. And rumored to have been into both women and men, who was also rumored to have shacked up with 16 year old Natalie at this bungalow. Mm -hmm. Oh, and what make this very sick is Natalie's parents knew this, and judging from what I read and said earlier about them, they were more than likely the ones who sold her to the director to get that part in that movie. Same thing happened with Judy Garland. She was rumored to have been a bargain deal to get roles in movies as a child that was set up by her parents as well. Times has, hasn't changed. Now that you see what Natalie had to go through and what she was raised to deal with and hide, it brings you back to the day and night of her death. And as Hollywood mourns the death of a favorite star, our Pete Citroen will be along to review the remarkable career of Natalie Wood, dead now at the age of 43. And just hours ago, the medical report on her death was made public. Let's go now to the newsroom for that story and the rest of the day's news from Evan White. Evan? Rita, the Los Angeles coroner today is saying actress Natalie Wood was drunk when she apparently slipped into the ocean trying to board that small rubber boat. Miss Wood, a three-time Oscar nominee, was found dead shortly after dawn yesterday just off Santa Catalina Island. She'd been with her husband, actor Robert Wagner, and another actor, Christopher Walken. They'd gone on to the island for dinner Saturday night and then returned to the 55-foot yacht. But when they were there, apparently an argument broke out between the two men. Not serious or violent, but when Wagner finished and went to find his wife, he says she wasn't there. Well, the Los Angeles coroner today, Thomas Noguchi, says she was drunk. That alcohol was a... 0.14%. That is uh, uh, 0.10% is considered uh, the person 
is under the influence of alcohol, so that's a little bit about that. Plans now are being made for a private funeral on Wednesday. Okay, it was told that she was traveling on a yacht with her husband, Robert Ragnar, as well as the ship's captain, Dennis Staverin, and Natalie's friend, actor Christopher Walken, whom Natalie was so quick to call Christopher her brother-in-law. They were very close. Now, it was told that her body was found floating in the water off Santa Catalina Island on November 29, 1981, about a mile away from the boat with a small inflatable dinghy nearby. Now, for years, Robert refused to talk with investigators of what happened to his wife. He make a statement here and there, but they're really short, brief, and they don't make any sense. It was told that Robert and she had an argument the night before she was found. He also said upon him going to bed, she wasn't there. But upon her being found, she had many bruises on her body and arms as well as an abrasion on her left cheek. The autopsy report found that Wood's blood alcohol content was 0.14% and there were traces of two types of medication in her bloodstream, a motion sickness pill and a painkiller, both of which increases the effects of alcohol. So they ruled her death as an accident by drowning in hypothermia. After allegedly trying to, I don't know, she was trying to get into a boat and they claimed that she slipped and hit her head. Even though she couldn't swim and hated getting into a body of water, especially at night. Now here are the conspiracies and theories after Dennis Daver and the captain spoke out. Now after 30 years, it was reported that Dennis Daver and the captain publicly stated that he lied. It was told that Natalie and Walken had been flirting with one another and insecure Wagner got jealous. Take a look at this. Tension was building throughout the whole weekend of Robert Wagner being jealous of Christopher Walken. And uh, that afternoon, Robert Wagner and myself, we joined Christopher and Natalie at the restaurant for dinner. And we had dinner, we had drinks. Um, Robert Wagner said it was time to return to the boat. Uh, Natalie, want, we, they want, we all kind of wanted to stay a little longer, but RJ said, no, nope, we're gonna go back to the boat. So we all went back to the boat. Um, I tied the dinghy up on the swim platform with a bow line and a stern line and we all went inside the boat and opened a bottle of wine, put the kettle on for some tea because now they like to have tea before she went to bed and um, the jealousy was, it was just getting so, so tense that Robert Wagner had picked up the bottle of wine and smashed it right in front of Natalie and Christopher on the coffee table. And at that moment, Christopher stood up and he went directly to his stateroom. And that was the last I've seen of him for that whole night. At that point, Natalie was devastated and she went into her stateroom and Robert Wagner had followed. And they were arguing in the stateroom. That night, Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood, uh, ferocious fight going on. You turned up your music so they would not think in your mind that you were eavesdropping or trying to hear them, but you did hear them. Yeah, yes, I did. Um, and I kept the music going, but I could, I, I, I could still hear the arguing. And um, then the arguing went on to the aft deck. And moments later, Everything became silent. It seems that Natalie was on the verge of divorcing Robert, whose career was being overshadowed by Natalie's at this time. Also because she got tired of his jealousy and being abused. The fights were constant and all the time. And she was reported to suddenly and frequently started to wear a lot of long sleeve clothes and pants. It is reported by family and close friends that she stayed with him for as long as she did because of the kids. Because she was starting to realize that the kids were old enough for her to go off to work sometimes and leave them with the nanny and family members. It was told his anger was volcanic and he envied and started to hate Natalie. I mean, you have to understand the teasing and the embarrassment he felt at this time, whereas men were supposed to have been the breadwinners. So with all of this in mind, he stayed drunk and that fateful night, 
Now, keep in mind, the day before, she had asked Davrin to take her into town to clear her mind, and she then got a hotel to get away from Ragnar. So it was there that Davrin and she ended up getting separate rooms at some hotel offshore because Ragnar and her were constantly fighting that night because he wanted to move the boat because it was storming and Natalie being terrified of dark water didn't want to move and wanted to stay where they were. Witnesses had overheard the argument as well. I mean at this point she was so fed up with Ragnar and he knew it so the next morning I guess she was feeling a little bit better so she went back to the boat to smooth things over with Ragnar but I'm sure at this point he was already plotting and and the anger at this point was boiling into a breaking point. So it was later where as Watkins and Woods went to a restaurant for some drinks, probably to give Ragnar some air and time alone. But keep in mind, Ragnar was a jealous man. So he had Davrin take him to the restaurant where they were and they all had drinks and it was important that they were so drunk upon leaving whereas the owner of the restaurant had to call the harbor master to make sure that they made it back to their boat safely meanwhile woods and Watkins were still laughing and wagner still feeling ignored and even more pissed and even more drunk dennis the captain said robert got so pissed that he burst a bottle of wine and screamed at christopher Walken, yelling you want to fuck my wife but Christopher ignored him and went to his bedroom and remained there for the entire night. Now, do note that Davrin even took a polygraph test, proving that's exactly what happened. So, later Davrin said that he heard them fighting, and it was brutal. He said he heard screaming and things being broken. It sounded like someone was being brutally beaten. So, he couldn't stand the noise, even through his music. So, he went to their room and asked Wagner if everything was okay. And Wagner told Davrin to go away. It apparently continued onto the deck, and then it suddenly went silent. Then later he found Wagner at the back of the boat, back face the water, saying that Natalie is gone. She is missing, and told Davern to look for her. Take a look at this. So I thought that maybe they were making up, and maybe they were going to go to bed, and that was going to be the end of it. So I waited for a little while, and I still had the music on, and um, I decided, well, I'm going to go down below and just I'm going to go to the F deck and just see if everything's OK. Well, Robert Wagner was standing there, leaning his back against the back of the boat, facing the facing the boat. And he said that uh, that Natalie was missing. And would I go search the boat? So I immediately went to my stateroom thinking that. Maybe she went to my stateroom because she felt maybe the, that she was safe there because the night before, Natalie and I had gone ashore and we stayed at a hotel um, because th there was arguing the day before as well. So I came back and I told Robert Wagner that Natalie was nowhere on the boat. I looked in Christopher's stateroom. I looked in the em other empty stateroom and she wasn't there. So I said to Robert Wagner, he said to me, he said, well, he said, the dinghy has gone too. Well, I, 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 just, I just knew that Natalie was so deathly afraid of the water and not really capable of taking that boat by herself. But he said the boat was gone and she was gone. So I, I thought, well, let, let, let's turn on the searchlight and let's just see if we can see her. So... After that, it was like he said no. Now, here are some witness statements. Now, there was a witness account who said that she heard someone yelling help and then someone saying, we're going to get you, keyword, we're, and the sound of splashing water. The witness also went on record saying that someone threatened her at the time and told her if she knows what's good for her, she would keep quiet. And then it was another witness statement who also heard two voices in the back of the boat screaming and it sounded like Robert and Natalie. So with these witness statements comes more theories. So I had to look deeper. So I went back a little farther and apparently it was one theory was that Ragnar and Walken were engaged in some homosexual activities while on boat. Apparently the lifeguard at the time witnessed this and eventually came out with this story. 
It was so that Woods caught them in bed together and they both may have conspired together to kill her, which sort of coincided with the witness story of, of her hearing someone yell help and then someone saying, we're going to get you. Keyword again, rear. But do remember this story brings up a past story whereas she caught Ragnar in the bed with the man and they shortly divorced. This was the first time they were married. So could they have conspired together to kill her to hide their secret? But there's one problem with this theory. Walken was married at this time and he has never been reported to have been gay. Oh, and judging from what Davern said, Walken seemed to have been more interested in Woods anyway. So again, the fingers are once again pointing at Wagner. Okay, so here's what also puzzles me. They said that she was wearing a heavy coat that while wet will weigh about 30 to 40 pounds they said that alone should have held her down but she was seen floating and she wasn't wearing that coat so i'm not sure about that story also it seems that the dinghy was found in neutral and with the key still in the ignition turned off as you see from the photos the dinghy didn't look damaged and there wasn't any trace of blood or scratches on it also why would she decide to leave willingly now while only wearing a nightgown, socks, and a heavy coat. When it was known that Natalie always made sure to be presentable at all times while in public. And if she was ready to leave him yet again, she would do what she did the night before and ask the captain to take her into town again. So why tonight she didn't? I believe that she didn't go on to the deck willingly. She was running for Ragnar after he beat her to a bloody pulp and then tossed her overboard. I mean, judging from the autopsy reports, he may have dragged her because she had bruises all of her legs and arms. Then, upon Davin finding Ragnar standing there, he may have tossed her, just tossed her. Ragnar knew he, he had to get rid of Davern, so he sent him on a wild goose chase. Then, upon Davern suggesting later for them to look for her and turn on the searchlights, he knew that would reveal everything, so he offered Davern a drink. I think at this time he was stalling and needed more time for her body to drift away some more and or so she can drown. I believe she was knocked unconscious before entering the water, though. And the lady may have heard the struggle with Woods and Wagner while on deck because Darwin said he heard Wagner say, get the fuck off my boat before it went silent. But also, let's look at the times too. They left the restaurant about 10.30 p.m. This is proven fact. Witnesses heard someone screaming between 11 p.m. to 11.25 before it went completely silent. The autopsy reported that she was dead around midnight. Wagner reported her missing around 1.30 peak, 1.30 a.m. They found her floating at about 7.30 a.m. Rigor mortis takes up to eight hours to fully set. Hers were three out of four plus of being fully set, meaning she was dead already upon entering the water. Now, with all of this alone should have been an ample amount of evidence to arrest Wagner. I mean, they arrested Cosby where they're about to with no evidence and with just freaking only hearsay. Just saying. Well, that's it. Tell me your thoughts below. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And also don't forget to follow my Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post on them every day. Hope to see you all there. Love you all. Bye.